cool. Hey friends, it's Devin here with Make Anything, and this week the folks at Make Printable challenged me to take a complex file and use their service to optimize it for 3D printing. I figured what better way to do that than to make a pretty complex VR sculpture. After all, the files I make in Gravity Sketch for VR are not really designed for 3D printing right off the bat. You gotta always do a little something to make it work. So we're gonna see if Make Printable makes it really easy to just process those files and get them printed. Also, I figured if I'm gonna make a really complex print that's gonna require all kinds of support material, why not incorporate the support into the design and make it part of the model instead of just part of the process? Thanks to Matter Hackers and BCN, I now have that Sigma printer, which gives me some pretty interesting opportunities and I think I have some ideas of how to take advantage of that dissolvable support. So let's just go ahead and jump into VR and start making something cool. All right, here we are in Gravity Sketch and it's already got some new features since the last time I used it. One huge improvement is the ability to have these reference images within the virtual environment. So I'm just gonna place these reference images in my virtual environment, make them nice and big, and put them in a space where I can refer to them while I'm drawing my model. So with that laid out, I can go ahead and just start drawing my skeleton. It's usually best to start with the large overall form, so I'm going to start with the spine because it basically runs along the length of this mammoth. And it's going to help me get a sense of the scale and proportion that I want to go for. Since I'm 3D printing this, I'm actually going to go for a kind of bulkier proportion that might make it look a little cartoonish, but it's going to help the bones not be so thin and fragile when I'm printing it out. So here's the spine, and I'm going to use another very cool feature that was just added to Gravity Sketch which is the ability to adjust the line using control points. So as you can see, I can bring up all these control points here and I'm able to simplify it and even just manually delete points to make the lines nice and smooth and have a lot of control over the shape, especially compared to earlier when I was just freehanding everything. Now, it might be a little overkill to do this with every line in your drawing, but for this big backbone, it's nice to have a good smooth line to start off with. Anyways, I'm not going for a totally perfect look. I like the rough, organic nature of VR drawings. So I'm actually gonna draw over this line again, just freehand, and kind of give it that rough look that I'm going for. For the tail here, I'm gonna use the variable stroke brush. So the lighter I press on the trigger on my HTC Vive, the thinner the brush stroke will be. This is generally a really nice ability so that I don't have to adjust the brush size constantly. I can just adjust the amount of pressure I'm putting on the trigger and create all these different widths of brush strokes. I'm going to use that same variable stroke for the rib cage here, since that also demands a shape that kind of tapers off as the ribs go around the body. At this point I decided it would be nice to have some construction lines, that way I could have a sense of the general form before I start drawing in all these individual ribs and details like that. So I'll change the color of the brush stroke to this bright blue, and I'm just going to use that as my construction geometry. So now I can really quickly trace out the rough form of my entire sculpture without having to worry too much about the fine details and making everything perfect. I'll get the shape of the chest, the head, and the tusks, and then I can just go ahead and adjust things accordingly. I'll throw the legs in there as well as the shoulder blades and really just as much construction geometry as I need until I'm comfortable going in with some more finalized strokes. Of course, the great thing with VR is nothing is final until you say so. So it's really easy to just move around individual brush strokes and move things around until you're happy with the result. So now you can see I have basically the entire mammoth done in construction geometry and I'll switch back to my bone color and start adding the true strokes that I'm going to keep at the end of this hole. So I'm going to continue adding those ribs. And you can see I'm still doing each of them a few times. I could use that control point feature, but I still think it's quicker to just give it a few attempts and it'll look nice and have some artistic feel to it rather than being totally perfect. It really just depends on what kind of a look you're going for. 
but this workflow is working really well for me. So I've got the ribs in there and I'm just gonna add these little bits of extra brush stroke connecting the ribs to the spine, not just to make it blend in more, but also to add strength to the printed part so that these ribs won't break off so easily. I'll be sure to keep looking at my reference and I can see that the mammoth has these long bones coming out the back, this hunchback. I'm not sure what those are called, but they look pretty cool, so I'm happy to add those in. <laughs> Obviously, I'm not going for total scientific accuracy. I'm just trying to create a cool model here. I'll run along the spine some more, adding bulk, adding texture, and making everything nice and sturdy. All right, so the midsection is relatively figured out. So now I'm gonna go ahead and start working on the head here. I wanna make the brush nice and big so I can fill in the volume of the skull pretty quickly and just get a nice rough shape. And because VR is awesome, I can just scale this mammoth up as much as I want, zoom way up into the mouth and just use a tiny brush to add in some teeth I'm doing it pretty rough, but as I said, it's really just limited to how much you want to put in and what kind of a look you're going for. Technically, it would be possible to go into there and sculpt individual teeth and make them look super perfect, but since this model isn't going to be printed so huge, those details would likely be lost in the final print anyways. So I'll do some things rougher than others. I'll draw in some eye sockets here and I can just grab those individual strokes and push them around until everything is in place and just keep filling in the skull here. All right, so that looks good. Now it's time for the very important tusks. And I want each tusk here to be one long, continuous, smooth, tapered brush stroke. So that's gonna be pretty challenging. But that control point feature is definitely going to come in handy for something like this. Still, it's going to take a few attempts just to get that taper right. Not only do I want a smooth taper, but I want to make sure that it doesn't come to a complete point because that'll be tough to 3D print as well. I'm creating a pretty crazy model as it is, so I might as well make some things easier for my printer. So once again, I'll use that control point mode to adjust this tusk, smooth it out, have it going just the way I want it to. Rather than make the second tusk from scratch, I'll just copy this one over, and then I can use that control point mode to modify it and create a mirrored tusk, but also have it slightly different. That way it looks more natural. I'm gonna go back into the head and make things blend together a little nicer now that I've got those tusks and I have a sense of the full proportion. I'll actually make a few adjustments on the teeth. The two sides don't look quite the same so I'll just mirror this right side over and flip it for the other end. And I think I'll make the chin here a little pointier as well. Just my own preference. Alright, we've got a good looking cranium now so it's time to move on and start filling in these shoulder blades. So I'll just go ahead and create all these concentric brush strokes until I have it all filled in into kind of a flat form and then build on that, adding more dimension as I go along. All right, so that side looks good. So now I'll just go over to the other side and try to create a similar looking shape. I could have had these mirrored while I was drawing the shoulder blades, but as far as I know, there's no way to copy it and mirror it after I've already drawn the one side. Plus, I kind of like the fact that both sides are drawn from scratch. It'll just keep things closer to the realm of traditional sculpture versus digital modeling, where you can just copy everything and flip things around. That's the thing I like about VR. It's super futuristic, but it's also a really good blend between traditional art and the future of creation. So there's the second shoulder blade, and now I'm gonna follow those legs that I drew with the construction geometry 
and add in my final skeleton. I'm just going to be quick, I don't want to dwell on anything too long. I'll draw in all the toes. Let's see, how many toes does a mammoth have? Three? Four? Eh. As I said, this is kind of a semi-caricature rather than an accurate fossil, so I can have a little creative leeway with how many toes I give him and things like that. Alright, looks good on the front end, so let's go ahead and work on those hips. I'm basically going to do things the same way I did for those shoulder blades, just a slightly different shape. For these back legs, I actually think I can get away with just copying over the two legs and slightly adjusting the pose. They're so scribbly anyways, you can't really distinguish left from right. So at this point, I've pretty much got everything drawn out. I can make some minor adjustments, but I think I'm safe to start removing some of the construction geometry. So I'll just zoom in and go throughout the model, grabbing those blue strokes and deleting them. Once I've done that, I can do my final tour of the model, make some final adjustments, and I definitely want to make sure all the joints are connected. Like this leg here in the back I noticed is barely connected to the hip. So I definitely want to fill that in with some extra brush strokes to make sure I have a nice solid connection. Otherwise it's going to give me a lot of trouble when I'm 3D printing. Yeah, and I'll do that on the front legs as well. And just all throughout make sure that there's enough bulk to this whole model. So that's about it for my fossil. I'm pretty happy with how it looks. And if I'm actually able to get this printed and looking like this, I will be pretty stoked. But I'm not quite done in VR. Remember I did say I wanted to incorporate the support material into the model as part of the design. And the way I wanted to do that was by modeling a giant block of ice that's going to capture this fossil. Then I can print that ice with the PVA support material and then if this is a gift for someone you could present it to them within this iceberg and have them dissolve it away as part of the presentation or a fun way of revealing what's inside. Now I want this ice to have a more faceted look, so I'm not going to draw it with these tubular brush strokes. Instead I'm going to use the surface tool, which lets me create flat planes. If I use pencil mode, I can just drop down points and it'll create straight lines that connect between them. So that makes it pretty easy to create this cool, faceted look, but it's still got a bit of an organic feel to it because not everything is perfect. With my left hand I can move around the plane that the surface is drawn on. And that's how I'll be able to create this three-dimensional faceted shape. So I'll just go around adding triangles and connecting all the different surfaces to try to create a solid block of ice around my mammoth. It is a bit tricky to orient the surfaces perfectly to connect everything, but it is easier than it might look on the screen to you guys, considering that I'm actually in a three-dimensional space when I'm doing this in VR. So that helps me get a sense of the depth and exactly how I want to place each of these flat surfaces. Alright, so I'm just going to close my mammoth up inside of there, making sure not to make any contact with him, because I want these to be two separate parts in the end. Alright, that's a pretty cool looking iceberg. But now the question is, how do we create two separate files? One of just the iceberg, and one of just the mammoth. Gravity Sketch does save out the materials, so there might be a way in another software to separate the files based on the two different colors that I used to make the skeleton versus the iceberg. But I have another trick that's also pretty easy, which is just copying everything over, and then in one of the copies I'll delete only the iceberg, and then the second copy I'll delete only the skeleton. That way I have both parts separated, but correctly scaled. Once I've separated those two parts, I can export everything as an OBJ file and I'll bring that into Microsoft 3D Builder to scale everything up together and then split the two parts into separate files. I can use that really cool settle feature they have here that I've used before to make everything sit flat on the ground. There we go, I'll just delete one at a time and save the STLs so that I have one STL of just the iceberg and a second of just the skeleton. So that's all good, I've got the model separated, but these are still not optimized for 3D printing, so there's a lot of intersecting faces and crazy stuff going on in this model. So, to deal with that, I'm going to go to makeprintable.com and upload the mammoth file first. 
that gets uploaded to their cloud server. And then I'm able to change a few settings like the polygon count, the wall thickness, and I could even hollow out the part if it was a big solid form to save printing material. But in this case for a skeleton, it's not really necessary. So I'll just go ahead and hit repair. And then you can just leave that be and the make printable servers will be working on that quickly and they'll email you when it's all done. It's super intuitive and straightforward so you don't have to go around messing with too many settings trying to make things work. So that's pretty awesome and I could do that with the iceberg as well but just for the sake of comparison I'm going to fix that part in Mesh Mixer the way I have done with previous VR sculptures. And that basically consists of using this make solid command in Mesh Mixer. As you can see, that kind of roughs up the edges of the model. Now there are all these settings that you can mess with, but it's just a little more complicated and it does take a really long time to do these calculations. In the amount of time it took to repair this iceberg, Make Printable was able to fix that mammoth sculpture. This mammoth skeleton has a lot of intersecting parts, so it would take a really long time to fix in Mesh Mixer that's another reason Make Printable is a nice option, because it uses their servers. It's not limited by how powerful your computer is. While Mesh Mixer works away on that iceberg, I can go back to Make Printable, and you can see my mammoth part has been repaired. And you can export the repaired model with several different file types, or even use their built-in slicer. But I'm going to use Simplify 3D, so I'll export that as an STL, and bring my two parts in separately. Then I can use the cross-section view to align the two parts pretty easily. I'll just budge things around and run through the cross-section of my print to make sure that there's no intersection between the iceberg and the mammoth. Once that looks good, I can open up my processes and set up my part for 3D printing. Basically what I'm going to do here is set one process for the mammoth. And for that mammoth, I'm going to have the left extruder using PLA printing the skeleton itself. And of course, I'll have to generate support material for it as well. But I will use the right extruder for that support material. And the right extruder is gonna be loaded with that dissolvable PV8 support material. So that first process is only gonna print the skeleton with support material. And then I'll create this second process to print just the iceberg using the right extruder, which will all be support material. Basically, at the end of this, the iceberg and the support material for the skeleton are all going to be printed using that dissolvable PVA. And just the skeleton itself is going to be printed in that PLA plastic. So when you dissolve all this in water, you'll just be left with the skeleton. That's what I'm hoping for. Let's send it to the printer and see if I can actually get this to work. So here's the part printing and I left it overnight. And if you keep an eye on the right side, you'll see that the little container that's supposed to capture the purged PVA support material actually fell off about halfway through the print. And that led to a lot of strings of PVA being dragged into the material, and it kind of just generally screwed up the print a little bit. And my settings just overall weren't perfectly dialed in, so the PLA material was pretty fragile as well. Still, the print did complete, and my concept kind of worked. You've got this iceberg, even though it's a lot more yellow than I was hoping it would be, but I think it would be fun to give this to someone as a gift and just ask them to drop it in the water and leave it there for a few hours. And as you can see in this time lapse, that iceberg dissolves away over time. Here it is after a couple hours, and I don't know whether it was my settings for the PLA or just the fact that the PVA was printing kind of messy, but the part came out really rough. The poor fossil's tusks had already fallen off, and everything else was really fragile. But hey, archaeology ain't an easy job, so I'll break out the toolkit and start getting to work. There's some residual PVA on the model, so I can use my tweezers to grab that away, wash it off a little more, and try to remove all this stringiness, which I wasn't very successful with. And uh, let's just say I'm glad I didn't choose archaeology as a career path because I don't think it's meant for me. In the end, I broke off all the legs in several places, and the tusks, and the tail. So uh, there's a lot of repair work to be done here. I just used super glue and held the parts in place temporarily with some putty until I was able to get a skeleton together. Obviously, I didn't want this part to come out broken into several pieces, but it kind of also fits the theme of an archaeological dig 
where you have to put together all the bones after you recover it. Still, I do want a cleaner, more intact fossil. So I went back and printed another mammoth, about three times as big, and without that iceberg around it. I actually printed it upside down because I realized that would use a little bit less support material. Still, this was an extremely challenging print, and you can see how wobbly that PVA support pillar is because it had to get all the way up to those tusks at the very end of the print, but it actually did work, and I carefully removed it from my printer. Then, just like the smaller mammoth, I had to run it under the water again and remove that support material. But luckily, this one came out a lot nicer. And just like the PVA, I got this really cool tan PLA filament from Matter Hackers, and I think it's super appropriate for a fossil like this. Almost everything came out perfectly, but these two little bones on the back of the spine didn't have support material underneath them for whatever reason, so I decided to fix those up with my 3D pen. I'm using my 3 Doodler because it uses the same 3mm PLA filament that my printer uses. Plus, I got this awesome nozzle kit which lets me change the size of the extrusion from the pen and it also has a smoothing tool which should help me out as well. The nozzle kit comes with this cool little container that also comes with a nozzle removal tool which makes it a lot easier to swap out the nozzles. So I'm going to put on the 0.5mm nozzle which is the closest to the 0.4mm nozzle on my 3D printer, so I can try to replicate the look. And then the smoothing tool just pops on top of any of those nozzles. I'll use some clippers to clean up those messed up bones just a little bit, and then I'll go over it with that smoothing tool once the pen is heated up. The smoothing tool does leave a little bit of stringiness, but it does its job, allowing you to reshape the plastic. Now I'm just going to use that exact same Matter Hackers filament for the pen, even though it is a little more likely to jam the 3 Doodler than using the 3 Doodler filament. But it did work, and I was able to go back in and really quickly fill in that extra plastic where the print had failed. Of course, even a steady hand isn't as perfect as a 3D printer, but I do think the end result looked alright, especially compared to having it just be a failed print or having to print the whole thing over again. So there it is, I finally have a really nice, complete mammoth skeleton. Lastly, I printed out a giant base, and once I cleaned that up, I just used some E6000 glue to stick down my mammoth. After giving that a few hours to dry, my model is actually complete. And looking really cool, if I might say so myself. Well, I've got to say I am very happy with how this skeleton came out and as you guys saw, a lot of different technologies went into making this work and come out so well. I sculpted this in VR, optimized it with Make Printable and Mesh Mixer, printed it on the BCN Sigma with dissolvable support material, repaired it with the 3Doodler pen, and now we have this in front of me. This channel has always been called Make Anything, but there were rules to 3D printing. And as we get further and further along, I'm able to disregard more and more of those rules and create some really crazy stuff like this. So it's really a limitless technology. Since there are so many possibilities, I'd love to hear what you guys think I should make next. Let me know in the comments and well, until next time, I'm Devin and this is Make Anything. Don't forget to stay inspired.